Newton would also have risked becoming a target for mobs of heretic hunters, often whipped into a frenzy by the clergy. A heretic, like a witch, is a threat, not just to truth, but to you. It's, it's a physical threat. It's going to compromise and corrupt the community. So very often, we know, you know from witch hunts, the, the mob, the people, will take direct action against these sorts of individuals. People are lynched. People are kicked to death. They're burned. The violence of the times is reflected in Newton's suppressed manuscripts. In these, he focuses his anger on the monks who corrupted Christianity by imposing the Trinity. We can see page after page of uh, material in which he tries to argue that the early church fathers, they're actually villains. Uh, they're criminals. And in some cases, he actually calls them murderers for some of the things that they had done. And they followed vanity and became vain. When requested to give a lay sermon, Newton used the Bible to condemn the Catholic Church's use of idolatry. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served Baal. Newton studied biblical texts obsessively. He had 30 Bibles in many languages, including Arabic and Hebrew. The books of prophecy, Daniel and Revelation, were his favorite texts, although they were often dismissed for their violent symbolism. Newton felt these contained, in code, the words of God and a description of past and future events. From his reading of Revelation, Newton became convinced God foresaw that the Catholics would corrupt pure Christianity. In 1675, Isaac Newton emerged from the womb of Trinity. His double life was in danger of being revealed. He could no longer put off the obligation as a professor to become a cleric, but that was against his heretical beliefs. So he set off to London to convince King Charles II to excuse him from taking holy orders. And Newton was elated. He'd heard the news he'd been waiting for. King Charles II had exempted him from taking holy orders without knowing he was excusing a heretic. For the moment, Newton was safe. But he would be tormented for the rest of his life should he stay silent or denounce the corruption of the Anglican Church publicly. If the Trinity is still here, so is the Antichrist. It's not something you can just sort of shrug off and say, oh, I'll deal with that tomorrow. It's not something that goes away when you go to sleep. It's going to haunt your dream. Newton could reassure himself that he was doing God's will. His grand project was to understand all God's secrets of the creation, of the forces that held the universe together, and of God's plans for the second coming of Christ and the return to pure Christianity. In England, near Salisbury, there's a piece of antiquity called Stonehenge. It seems to be an ancient temple, for it is an area compassed circularly with two rows of very great stones with passages on all sides for people to go in and out. Newton only visited Stonehenge in his imagination, but he was sure it also revealed the wisdom of the ancients. He told this story that in ancient times, people knew that the sun was in the middle of the world, the planets orbit the sun. There was a force of gravity between the planets and the sun, and Newton said the ancients knew that. Okay, now how did he know that the ancients knew these things? Well, one sign was that the ancients built buildings which symbolized the solar system. That the ancient temples had fires in the middle, which stood for the sun, 
So he understood Stonehenge as an image of the solar system with its central fire and then the sarsen stones as a series of concentric rings standing for the orbits of the planets. He could imagine priests walking around Stonehenge chanting various songs, um, carrying on the Vestal religion, which was the religion that presumably God gave to Adam. In 1684, Edmund Halley, a young astronomer, asked Newton a question that would refocus his scientific genius on gravity, the mysterious force that binds the universe together. Truly remarkable invention. Yeah. Thank you. Mirror requires work. My question is this. What kind of curve would be described by the planets? supposing the force of the attraction toward the sun to be reciprocal to the square of the distance from it. An ellipse. An ellipse? How do you know? I've done the calculation. You have? How did you calculate it? I'll show you. There uh, should be it somewhere. Halley's question would change science forever. It caused Newton three years' frenzied work. Uh, don't worry, I will redo the calculations. I'll send you a copy. Some months later, Halley received a short tract on the motion of planets in orbit. In his hand, Halley had the seeds of Newton's The Principia Mathematica, published in 1687. It is the greatest book of science ever written, bar none. It is the most magnificent work, it is the most all-encompassing work, it is the most daring book of any scientific treatise ever written. 